Hello everyone and welcome to Gumno YouTube channel. Today topic I would like to show you all about the load balancing across multiple paths with reversion tool. Well, before we start to configure load balancing across multiple paths on the serial file slash zero and serial file slash one interface of the O1 and O2 router, as you can see in my network diagram. The first thing we need to know what is load balancing and why we need load balancing. Okay, so now let's go to see the introduction all together. Load balancing is a method that allows a router to use multiple paths to a destination when forwarding packet to get better link usage. It is a standard functionality of the Cisco II router software and is available across all router platform as well as automatically activated if the routing table has multiple paths to a destination. RIP is capable of load balancing over as many equal code paths, with four paths being default. To change the maximum number of parallel paths allow use the following command in router configuration mode. Okay, so to change maximum number of parallel paths, you need to go to router configuration mode and then type the command maximum pass space numbers. Okay, okay, fast switching and process switching. Load sharing or load balancing can be either per destination fast switching, per packet process switching. Okay, so now we will talk more detail about fast switching and process switching all together. So now we start from the fast switching first. Okay, fast switching per destination load balancing. The default for most interfaces is fast switching. Load balancing is distributed according to the Destination IP address. Given two paths to the same network, all packets for one destination IP address will travel over the first pass. All packets for the second destination will travel over second pass. All packets for the third destination will again travel over the first pass and so on. Okay, as you can see in our network diagram when we already configure load balancing with the fast switching on serial file slash zero and serial file slash one of O1 and O2 router. Okay, as you can see from the O1 router to remote network 192.168.3.0 we can go from over router to this remote network through serial file slash zero and also can go to this remote network from over router through serial file slash one. Okay, so when we ping from server 2012 machine to PCW7 machine, all packets go to the machine from O1 router through serial file slash zero, okay? And then we ping from server 2012 machine to PC2W7 machine. All packets go to this machine from O1 router through serial file slash one interface, okay? This is the manner of the load balloon Sorry, the manner of the load balancing with the fast switching. Okay, so all packet go to one link, and all of another packet that go to a different machine will go to 
another link. As you can see, when we first ping from the server 2012 machine to PCW7, all packets go to this machine from O1 router through serial file slash zero. And then we ping from the server 2012 machine again to PC2W7 machine. All packets go to this machine from O1 router through serial file slash one interface. Okay, this is the manner of load balancing with the fast switching. Okay, okay, by default. Fast switching is enabled on the interface of the router, but in case you disable it and then you want to enable it again, so you need to go to interface configuration mode and then tie the command IP root cast. Okay, okay. If you want to disable fast switching on the interface of router, okay. You can go to the interface. Okay, you can go to the interface configuration mode and then type the command no IP root car. Okay, this means that you disable fast switching and enable process switching. Okay, so now we will move to talk detail about the process switching. Okay, process switching per packet load balancing okay given equal code pass per packet load sharing mean that one packet to a destination is sent over one link next packet to the same destination is sent over the next link and so on okay as you can see in our diagram when we ping from server 2012 machine to the PCW7 machine. First packet go to this machine from the O1 router through serial 5 slash 0 interface. And second packet go to this machine from O1 router through serial 5 slash 1 interface. Okay, so this is the manner of load balancing with process switching okay okay to enable distributed or process switching you go to interface configuration mode and then tie the command no ip root cast okay so which one you need to choose to apply on your interface router when you config load balance sharing okay so you can see the the the, the take note below so case fast switching or process switching process switching per packet load balancing has a price load balancing may be distributed more evenly but the lower switching time and processor utilization of fast switching are locked. Okay, so I recommend you need to use fast switching. Okay. Okay, so our video today will focus on the two important points. The first point is config load balancing. Sorry, config load balance across multiple paths. And the second point is observe the load balancing process. Okay, so now we will move to the step to configure all together. Okay, step one, configure the hostname, password, interfaces, and RIP version two on the router, okay? Okay, to do this on the router, enter the global configuration mode, and configure the hostname as shown in diagram. Okay, we will config this router name O1 and this router name O2. Okay. Okay, then configure console, virtual terminal, and enable secret password for security login. Okay. Make configure interfaces and routing according to the diagram. 
make sure to apply running config to the startup config on each router so the configuration will not be locked if the router is power cycle. Okay, so now let's start to step one all together. So I start from the all one router first. Oh, okay, as you can see now, we are on the privilege execute mode of the all one router and we already config the host name. So we no need to config host name again. So we move to global configuration mode to configure password interface and reverse and two. Okay, so let's start now. So from privilege execute mode to global configuration mode, you enter the command con f space t. Okay, as you can see now we are on global configuration mode. So we start to configure console password with the command line console zero password. Okay, my password is Cisco. Okay, and then log in. Okay, and then exit from the specific mode to continue configure virtual terminal password with the command line vtvy04 password. I put 123 and then log in. Okay, and then exit from the global configuration mode to Okay, exit from the specific configuration mode to global configuration mode to continue configure enable secret password with the command enable secret. Okay, my secret password, I put class. Okay, okay. so now on the all one router, we already finished configure the password. And now we continue to configure interface with the command interface 500 0 Okay, as you can see in the diagram, 5 is the net 0 slash 0 of all one router has IP 192.168.1.1 with the subnet mask slash 24. Okay, IP address 192.168.1.1, subnet mask 255.255.255.0, and then open the interface with the command no shutdown. Okay, and then we config another interface, interface serial 5 slash 0, IP address, okay, as you can see in diagram, serial 5 slash 0, IP address 192.168.2.1 with the subnet mask slash 30, okay, 192.168.2.1. 255.255.255.252 and then open this interface with the command no shutdown. Okay, then continue to configure serial file slash 1 IP address 192.168.4.0 sorry, .4.1 subnet mask 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255
network security. Okay, so you need to configure fast internet zero slash zero to become a passive interface. Okay, so let's start now with the command passive interface fast internet zero slash zero. Okay, so now we will exit to the privilege execute mode to save configuration file from RAM to NVRAM with the command copy run config start config okay okay so after we already configure on the router one so now move to configure on the or two router okay so let's start now you go to the global configuration mode and then start to configure console password with the command line console zero okay password cisco log in okay and then exit from the specific mode to continue configure virtual terminal password with the command line vtv zero space four password one two three log in okay and then exit from the specific mode to configure enable secret password with the command enable secret okay i put the secret password class okay so now we finish configure password on all two router and then continue to configure interface with the command interface serial file slash zero ip address okay as you can see in the diagram serial file slash zero 192.168.2.2 okay with the subnet mask slash 30 okay 192.168.2.2 subnet mask 255.255.255.252 and then open interface with the command no shutdown okay because this interface is DTE so no need clock rate okay and for the serial file is sorry for the serial file slash zero and serial file slash one of the all one router is dce so we need clock rate okay so now i go to the all one router to configure clock rate of the serial file slash zero and serial file slash one okay so let's start now interface serial file slash zero clock rate okay i put for a uh, uh, 64 zero, zero, zero. and then interface serial file slash one clock rate clock rate 64 zero, zero, zero. okay okay so now move to configure router two okay to configure Another interface, interface serial file slash one. IP address 192.168.4.2 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.252 and then open interface with the command no shutdown. Okay, and then continue to configure file internet zero slash zero. IP address, okay, as you can see in diagram, file is net 0 slash 0, have IP 192.168.3.1, okay, 192.168.3.1, and then open interface with the command no shutdown. Okay, now we finish configure IP of the interface of all two router. So we will exit from the specific configuration mode to global mode to start configure RIP version 2. Okay, so let's start now with the command router RIP and then version 2 network. Okay, as you can see, we have three directly connected network of the all two router network 192.168.2.0.3.0 and 
4.0 so we need to advertise these three networks okay so let's start now 192.168.2.0 another network dot three dot zero and last network dot four dot zero okay and five is the net zero slash zero of all two router we need to config it to be a passive interface to use bandwidth efficiency and to increase network security okay so let's start now with the command passive interface five is the net zero slash zero Okay, so now we need to exit to the privilege execute mode to save configuration file from RAM to NVRAM with the command copy run config start up config. Okay, okay, so we will move to the next step. Okay. Okay, step two, configure the computer with the proper IP address, subnet mask, and default gateways. Okay, after you already configure computer with the proper IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway, you can test the configuration by pinging all interface from each computer to see the result. Successful or not? If the pinging is not successful, Okay, troubleshoot the configuration. Okay, so let's start to step two together. Okay, so I have already config IP address on the server 2012 machine, on the PC W7 machine, and on the PC2 W7 machine. Okay, I already config IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway address on this three machine okay so i just check for you okay so now i open the server 2012 machine okay this machine okay i check ip address configuration for you okay to see okay as you can see i already configured ip address okay subnet mask default gateway address and dns server address okay so move to the computer PCW7, okay, this machine, okay, to check, I already config IP address or not yet, okay, as you can see, I already config uh, IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server address, okay, okay, and then move to the computer PC2W7, okay, this machine, Okay, I also configure IP address properly on the machine. As you can see, IP, subnet mask, default gateway, okay, and DNS server address. So, from the, okay, so from the server 2012 machine, I will ping to PC W7 machine and then ping to PC2 W7 machine to test connectivity. Okay, so let's start now. Okay, so I open the power cell. Okay, I open the power cell. Okay, and then I try to test connectivity ping to the W to the PC W7 with IP 192.168.2.0. Okay, as you can see, reply from the machine with the IP 192.168.3.2. So it means that server 2012 machine and this machine can communicate with each other through O1 and O2 router. Okay, because we already configured RIP version 2 on these two routers. So these two router can no remote network of each other okay so now we will ping from the server to 2012 machine to pc2 w7 ip of the pc2 w7 is 192.168.3.3 okay so let's start now okay we ping to the machine with the ip.3.3 .3. okay i can see reply from the machine with the ip 192.1 
68.3.3. Okay, so now we will move to the next step. Okay, step three. Okay, check the basic routing configuration. Okay, enter show IP route command on each router to monitor the load balancing. Okay, as you can see in the picture, on the all one router, I use command show IP route to check the routing table of the all one router. And you can see remote network 192.168.3.0 all one router learn from RIP. Okay, learn from RIP or stand for the RIP as you can see code. Okay, and go to the remote network from uh, all one router. We can go to the remote network through two interface. Interface serial file slash one and interface serial file slash zero. Okay. This stand from all one router to the remote network. One router. Okay. Okay. One router. Router or two. Okay. So from all one router to remote network 192.168.3.0, we can go from of one router to this remote network through serial file slash one and also can go to this remote network through interface serial file slash zero. Okay, this time from of one router to this remote network, one router. Okay, or two router. Okay, so let's start to check all together. Okay, so we go to privilege execute mode and then enter the command show IP root. Okay. Show IP root. Okay, as you can see, okay, remote network 192.168.3.0. Go to this remote network from all one router through serial file slash one and also through serial file slash zero. Okay, okay, and then you can go to the or to router to check routing table. Show IP root. Okay. Okay, as you can see, to remote network 192.168.1.0 from all two router, go to this remote network. We can go to through serial file slash one and serial file slash zero. Okay, this is because we already configure the load balancing. Okay, load balancing. Okay, so now we will move to the next step. Okay. Step four, make sure that the router load balance is on a per packet basis, process switching, okay? Configure router to load balance on a per packet basis, both serial interface, serial file slash zero and serial file slash one must use process switching. Process switching forces the router to look in the routing table for destination network of each root packet. In contrast, fast switching, which is default, store the initial table lookup in a high-speed cache and use the information to root packet to the same destination. Okay, enter IP interface command to, ver to verify the interface is setting to fast switching. Okay, and then you can enable Process switching on the both serial interfaces of the router, okay, by go to the interface configuration mode and then type the command no IP root cast, okay, no IP root cast, it means that we disable fast switching and then we enable process switching, okay, okay, so now let's start the step for all together. Okay, so I start from the all one router first. Okay, so before we disable fast switching, okay, we need to verify with the command show IP interface serial file slash zero. Okay, as you can see, interface serial file slash zero, IP fast switching is enabled. Okay, and then we check another interface with the command show IP interface serial file slash one. 
Okay, as you can see, serial file slash one is also IP fast switching. Is oh this it this this uh, disable maybe I disable. Okay, so I go to enable it interface serial file slash one IP root cache. Okay. Okay, so I check again. So IP interface serial file slash one. Okay, as you can see now, interface serial file slash one. IP fast switching is enabled. Okay, and then move to the all two router to check. Okay, all together. Show IP interface serial file slash zero. Okay, as you can see, interface serial file slash zero. IP fast switching is enabled, okay, and show IP interface serial file slash one, okay, IP fast switching is also enabled, okay, so now we will move to disable, okay, fast switching on the serial file is the zero. Sorry, serial uh, file slash zero and serial file slash one of the O1 and O2 router. Okay, so let's start now. I start from the O1 router. So from the privilege execute mode, you type the command con F spetty to global mode. And then you select the interface serial file slash zero. And then enable process switching by use the command no IP root cast. Okay. Okay. Interface serial file slash one. No IP root cast. Okay. And then check the. Okay. Check to see that interface is disable fast switching and enable process switching. Okay. With the command show. IP interface serial file slash zero. Okay, as you can see now, IP fast switching is disabled. Okay, we check another interface with the command show IP interface serial file slash one. Okay, serial file slash one interface is now IP fast switching is also disabled. Okay, so now we move to the R2 router to disable fast switching, okay, on the serial file slash zero and serial file slash one. Okay, so let's start now. Interface serial file slash zero, no IP root cast, okay. Another interface, interface serial file slash one, no IP root Okay, so now we verify the interface serial file is net. Sorry, interface serial file slash zero and interface serial file slash one with the command show I sorry so I sorry with the command show IP interface serial file slash zero. Okay, as you can see, IP file switching is disabled. Okay, another interface. So IP interface serial file slash one. Okay, serial file slash one also IP fast switching is disabled. Okay, so now we will move to the next step. Okay, step five. Verify per packet load balancing. Okay, process switching. Because there are two routes to destination network 192.168.3.0 with the subnet mask slash 24 from O1 routers. Okay, as you can see, from O1 router to this network 192.168.3.0, we have two routes from sorry from serial. We have two routes. Okay. To the network 192.168.3.0 from O1 router, we can go to this network through two routes from 
serial file slash one and from serial file slash zero. Okay. Okay. Half the packet will be sent along one path and half will travel over the other. Okay. The path selection alternate with each packet received. Observe this process by using the back IP packet from the O1 router. Okay, so the back IP packet can be used to observe packet send and receive and interface that are involved. Okay, so to test you need to send 30 ping packet across the across the network from the from computer attached to or one router to the computer attached to the or two router. They can be done with the ping IP 192.168.3.2 space hyphen n space 30 command on the server 2012 machine. Okay, as the ping are responded to the router generate IP packet information stop the debug by using the command debug and debug all on our router and then examine and record part of the debug output okay uh, i show you in the picture i will ping from the server 2012 machine to machine name pcw7 okay so we will record the debug output of the OV1 router. Okay, as you can see in the picture. So from the OV1 router to this machine, we can the packet some packet go through the interface serial file one, and some packet go through interface serial file slash zero. Okay, because we already okay enable we already enable load balancing with the process switching on the serial file slash zero and serial file slash one interface of the O1 and O2 router. Okay, I show you in the picture. Uh, you can see some packet go to the destination machine through serial file slash one and some packet go to destination machine through serial file slash zero okay send full packet okay sending full packet okay so now let's start the okay uh, step five all together verify the verify per packet load balancing okay process switching okay Okay, so now let's start together. Okay, so I go to the O1 router to test. Okay, so I debug. Okay, we type the command debug. Debug IP package. Okay, debug IP packet. Okay, and then we start to ping from the server 2012 machine to the PCW7. Okay, so we start to ping. Okay, we start to ping. Ping. 192.168.3.2 space hyphen n okay 30 we, we send 30 package okay enter okay as you can see now reply from the machine with the ip 192.168.3.2 okay you can go to the o1 to see the debug process okay this is the debug process okay Okay, as you can see, the ping is not yet complete. Okay, so you need to wait. Okay, after it complete, I will check the output debug of the O1 router. Okay, so now we, it complete. Okay, you can check the debug. Okay, output of the O1 router. Okay, you can check debug. Okay. Okay, you can stop. Debug. Okay, you can stop debug with the command and debug all, or with the command no debug IP 
packet okay you can choose which one okay so now i stop the debug okay with the command and debug and the debug okay and debug and debug all okay okay and then you can check the result all together okay you can check the result okay serial width okay with Wait, wait. Okay, check the result. The box okay wait okay check the result okay as you can see this saw address okay this some packet go to the destination okay through the serial file slash zero okay go to the destination through the serial file slash zero and some packet okay some packet go to the destination okay some package you can check to see okay as you can see uh, some package okay with the saw IP like this go to the destination through okay through serial file slash one okay so as you can see some packet go to the destination with the serial files slash zero and some packet go to the destination with the serial file slash one okay so from uh, machine 2012 that we ping to pcw7 machine some packet go to the machine through interface serial file slash zero and some packet go to the machine through serial file slash one okay this is because we already config these two interface of all one router with the load balancing okay we we have config serial file ethernet sorry serial file slash zero and serial file slash one with the load balancing and then we have enable process switching okay so has a package will go to destination through one link and has another package will go to destination through another link okay so now we will move to the next step okay okay step six verify per destination load balancing okay fast switching after verifying per package load balancing configure each router to use per destination load balancing both the real interfaces of each router must use fast switching so that the root cast can be used as the initial table lookup use the command ip root cast to enable fast switching 
and then show IP interface of the serial interface of the each router to verify fast switching are enabled. Okay, and then the routing table is consulted only one per destination. Therefore, packet that are part of the that are part of a packet chain to a specific host will all follow the same path. Only when second destination forces another table lookup or when the cast in three expire will the alternate path be used. Okay, you can use debug IP packet and then ping command to test. Okay, so as you can see from the server 2012 machine, I ping to machine with the IP 192.168.3.2 first. Okay, from this machine, I ping to this machine first. Okay, so you can see the debug output. Okay, you can see the debug debug outputs. Okay, go to destination machine only one interface through serial file slash zero okay all package that go from okay that go from all one router to this machine through only one interface serial file slash zero okay and then we continue to ping from the server 2012 machine ping to another machine with the ip 192.1 68.3.3 okay then we will ping from server 2012 machine to this machine pc2w7 and then you can see the debug output okay as i show okay okay go to this machine okay this machine with the ip 192.1 through only one another interface interface serial file slash one okay so this is because we have enable okay because we have enable fast switching okay so all package go to destination okay all package go to 192.168.3.2 destination through only serial file slash zero okay and all packet that go to pc2w7 destination okay go to through serial file slash one interface because serial slash zero and serial slash one of the all one router we have config we have enabled okay we have enable fast switching okay so now let's start to step okay set all together so we need to enable fast switching on the serial zero serial file slash zero and serial file slash one of the of one and all two router okay so let's start now i start from the of one router first Okay, so we go to the global configuration mode and then type the command interface serial file slash zero. Okay, IP root cast. Okay, and then interface serial file slash what? IP root cast. Okay, and then you can check to verify with the command show IP interface okay so IP interface serial file slash zero okay now you can see IP fast switching is enabled okay and then you check another interface with the command show IP interface serial file slash one okay as you can see serial file slash one now IP fast switching is enabled. Okay, so move to the auto router to configure, okay, to enable fast switching on the serial file slash zero and serial file slash one. Okay, so let's start now. 
interface real file slash zero ip root cast and then interface real file slash one ip root cast okay and then exit to the privilege execute mode to check okay to verify okay with the command show ip interface serial file slash zero as uh, you can see serial file slash zero ip fast switching is enabled okay check another interface with the command show ip interface serial file slash one okay as uh, you can see ip fast switching is enabled on the serial file slash one okay so now we will use the command debug ip package okay okay and then we ping from the server 2012 machine okay to the machine with the ip 192.168.3.24 and then ping from the server 2012 machine to the machine 192.168.3.3 okay so let's start now I go to the O1 and then debugs. Okay, debugs, and then type the command debug IP. Okay, debug IP package. Debug IP package. Okay, and then ping from the ping the from the server 2012. Okay, to the okay. Okay, as you can see, reply from the machine with the IP 192.168.3.2. Okay, so you check the debug output of the O1 router. Okay, not yet complete. After complete, I will check for you. Okay, so now complete. Okay, so we will move to the O1 to check. Okay, so I and the box and the box all. Okay, you can see. Okay, you can see all package. Okay, all package go to the machine with the IP one. 92 okay go to the machine with ip 192.168.3.2 okay from all one router through only serial file slash zero okay as you can see through only serial file slash zero okay S through only interface serial file slash zero okay so okay so debug again debug ip package again and then ping from the server 2012 machine to this machine with IP 192.168.3.3 okay so let's start now dot three dot three okay and then we will go to check the debug output of our one router after this ping complete okay as you can see this is the debug outputs Okay, you need wait a moment. Okay, now ping complete. Okay, so now go to the O1 to see the debug output. So I undebug, undebug all. Okay, okay, and then you check to see all together. Okay. Okay, check to see.
wait okay check to see Wait, okay. Okay, I debug again and typing again. Debug IP package. Okay, and then ping from the server 2012 machine again. Okay, wait to see the result. Okay. Okay, now you can undebug and the bug all. Okay, and the bug all. Okay. Okay, as you can see, all package from the of one router. Okay, all package from the of one router that you ping from server 2012 machine to the PC 2W7 machine only go through serial file slash 1 okay only go through serial file slash 1 okay as you can see in the debug IP packet output okay only serial file slash 1 okay only serial file slash 1 okay so this is because we already enable because we already enable fast switching on the serial file slash zero and file slash one of the oven router. Okay, so my video today is finished. Okay, finally, I would like to say don't forget to subscribe and share my video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. See you next time.